So I am in that area of Tokyo again, going to an editorial meeting of a Discovery Channel Japanese version uh, program uh, committee. And um, it's an interesting program, as I said earlier. It's a program about creativity, science, technology, and arts. But that's like a small scale TED. Uh, not really on that scale, but you know. Um, it's a good program and today I'm gonna go to an editorial meeting. This is in Tokyo in the Aoyama area. And uh, yeah, I would like to use this time to reflect what has been happening in Japan recently. Um, you know, um, yeah, we are, I'm waiting for the traffic signal and I'm waiting for the traffic signal. It's kind of awkward to keep talking because people can listen and it's weird to be speaking English alone <laughs> in the heart of Tokyo. Anyway, um, so you know what's happening in Japan at uh, the zeitgeist so to speak is quite interesting because uh, there have been really really a lot of talks about uh, necessary reforms and because it was uh, perceived that the Japanese society needs a lot of updating including educational systems and political systems, media and so on. And then came the backlash and you know, many popular media uh, reported on how great Japan was. You know, lauding Japanese people doing this and that in various parts of the world and how the people from abroad were applauding Japanese culture, food and customs and so on. So there was this wave, not in a strictly nationalistic sense, but in a way that were reassuring for the Japanese people, feeling kind of intimidated and feeling small in this era of globalization when China is growing rapidly and Japan is taking over as economic power and so on. So that was a phase. So let me rephrase it again. Uh, so there was first this urge for reform, and then there was this backlash of praising Japan, more or less. But then, when the waves of praise Japan um, heat wave was gone, interestingly, uh, we don't know anything anymore. I mean, since there are not so many people around here, I don't have to really wear wearmas, face masks, in the strict sense. Um, you know, because there's nothing, no movement right now. I mean, there was remarkably little uh, discourse on the future of Japan. And there's this sea of tranquilities, if you like, in the so Japanese social media and media in general. Partly, pro partly due to this situation, you know what, but also because the dynamics of uh, art to reform or the art to praise Japan for its own sake have played out. And we are in a phase where we need something more fundamentally, more deeply rooted whether we reform ourselves or not, we need to you know, come to terms with the realities of ourselves and the world. And in order to do that, there would be no place for superficial arguments, I think. And I think that's why uh, there's no activities on the surface, uh, pro or against the status quo of Japan. So that is quite interesting to observe and it would be something that a resident here in Tokyo or can feel and record and report. So that's what I'm doing right now. So the question is, out of this sea of tranquility, if you like, where would Japan go? That's uh, some, something really interesting and something that is not entirely independent from my own 
course of life, uh, you know, I have my own agenda. But uh, at the same time, I, my agenda would be coupled with the laws of this nation and this city. So, yeah, it's actually so, <laughs> some stuffer, you know, <laughs> sticking his head out of there. And I think he was looking out for me because I'm late for the meeting as usual. And I think he was checking if I was coming along. And I am just, you know, a few minutes late. And, well, I don't have a watch, actually. I'm not a watch person, so. Anyway, so I have to finish recording now and hurry off to the meeting. Uh, not to worry the stuffer any more than is necessary. So, see you around. <laughs>